In this video, I'll explain the BEM naming convention for CSS in a simple and easy to understand way. This guide is perfect for new web developers or anyone looking to organize their CSS. So let's start with what is BEM naming? BEM stands for Block, Element and Modifier. It's a way to name things in CSS so they're easy to understand and stay organized. Imagine your CSS classes as labels that can tell exactly what part of your design you're working with and how it fits into the bigger picture. Let's explain BEM using a card design. So this card has the main card itself, a featured image at the top, a title, an excerpt or a short piece of text, and there are two buttons, one styled differently as a featured button. Now let's take a look at blocks. The block is the wrapper that holds everything together. It's the main component. For our example, the card is the block. The block's name should be simple and describe the main idea. So let's name our block card. Then we have elements. An element is a smaller piece inside the block with its own job. So in our card example, we've got the featured image, which is an element. The title, the excerpt, and the buttons are also elements. To name an element, we take the block's name, card, and add the element's name after it. This shows that the element belongs to the block. For example, card image or card button. To separate them, we use double underscores to separate the block element names. Next, we have modifiers. A modifier is like a tag that indicates something is slightly different. It's used when you want to change how something looks or works. So sticking with our example, one of our buttons might be a special button like a buy now button or something different. A modifier shows that the button is different from the regular button in some way. In our example, we want a different background color to highlight the difference from the default normal buttons. So modifiers are like adjectives, describing how something changes while still being part of the block or element. So let's stick with our card example and target our special button. Let's call it card underscore underscore button dash dash featured. So let's take a look at how BEM looks in the card example. The card is a block. The image, title, excerpt, and buttons are elements of the card. The featured button is a button element with a modifier that makes it unique. Okay, so now we've seen this, let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of BEM naming. Start off with the pros. Clarity. Every part of your design has a clear name so you always know what you're styling. Consistency. Following the same rules across your project is much easier. You prevent conflicts, so names are specific to blocks and elements, so styles don't accidentally mess up other parts of your site. They're reusable. Blocks and elements can be used again without worrying about breaking styles. And then you have scalability. Great for large projects with lots of different components. Let's take a look at some cons. They have long names. Class names can get long, making your HTML harder to read. There's repetition. Names can feel very repetitive. Example saying card in every class for the card design. There's a learning curve. It can be tricky to understand initially if you're new to it. And you may find it's overkill for small projects. Simple designs might feel unnecessary and require extra work. So final thoughts to wrap up. BEM helps keep your CSS clean, organized, and easy to manage, especially for big projects. It takes a little getting used to, but you can save loads of time and confusion in the long run when you adopt it.